I've been getting a lot of questions about what to do after a renovation. When should you start mowing? When should you taper off the water? What should your watering schedule be? So today I thought it'd be a good idea to kind of look at the backyard, see where we're at, and talk about some of this stuff. So what it comes down to when you're looking at when to mow, you want to look at sort of what height you want to keep your grass at. Now this doesn't have to be something that you decide forever. If you decide right now that you'd like to sort of maintain a certain height and in the future you decide that maybe it's not adapting to the heat as well and you want to raise it up in the summer and come down a little more in the fall, all those things are okay too. But for me right now, I would like to keep this around between two and two and a half inches for the rest of this fall season. Kind of try to get it to thicken up a little bit and stay a little tighter as we get into this fall season. So basically it's as simple as coming out here with the tape measure and seeing how tall things are at. So I'm already up to about four inches in some places, even slightly more than that. And you can definitely tell this grass needs to be mowed now because it's starting to flop over. It doesn't have a great root system underneath it yet to where it can withstand getting too tall without flopping over. So I need to let this ground dry out a little bit more today, but I can definitely tell now simply by looking at this that Mainly about an inch higher than what you want to mow is where you want to target your first mow. I'm slightly over that right now. There's no problem with that. That's okay. But that's probably what I'd be looking at for the first mow. You can see my footprints of where I was at and how that is not standing up very well. What are some things to consider with the first mow? Well, you could use a manual reel mower like this. I've definitely done that in the past quite a bit to mow really cleanly and not do much damage on the turf because you can pick up this machine in the corners and you can sort of move it around without having to make turns. But the only problem is this one does have a roller on it. So when this grass gets so tall, it's so floppy, it just tends to roll everything over afterwards. And that's not really a great look either. So today I actually will probably go straight to a rotary mower, which is what most of you guys probably have as well. So you just have to be careful, let the ground dry out a little bit if you can, and also just try to do your best without doing any major turns or digging around into anything. So another question that I often get is, should you remove your striping kit or should you use the striping kit when you're doing this first mow? Well, for the most part, I would try not to use one if possible, just because as I just mentioned, the root system hasn't really fully developed here to where you can kind of go over everything and not just sort of smash it down with a striping kit. So if possible, I would say for these first few mows, if you cannot use your striping kit, that would probably be a good idea. It's one of the reasons why I like this lawn striper that I have on this Honda mower so much is just because it's easy to remove. Some of them are not so easy to remove, so I know that it might be a pain to do that. So I think though for these first few mows, if you can get good suction to lift the grass, cut it cleanly and not have anything rolling over it afterwards, it's probably the best case scenario. So that was just a question that I got recently about the lawn striping. And if you want to check out my video from earlier this summer, I made one on lawn striping and how that whole system works. So check that out. So next consideration when doing the first mow is make sure that your blades are as sharp as possible. So this is a time right now that I will probably take off my blades and I haven't sharpened them in a little bit. So I will make sure today that they are sharp and ready to go for this mow. You just get the cleanest cut that you can possibly get on this new grass make sure you're not shredding anything or having a difficult time cutting through it so sharp blades are a must so I've just got a flap disc on here and I'm going to use that it does really quick work of just touching up blades and sharpening them so these look pretty good yet in terms of really no nicks or anything in there but but yeah they definitely need to be sharpened pretty easy method and quick method of getting that done Now me personally, I like to bag or side discharge the clippings on the first time here. If the grass does happen to get a little longer, which today it is, and I'm cutting off probably more than a third, which is okay on the first couple mows as you train it, then I just don't want any clumping issues. So if you're mulching, it can get kind of easy for that grass to get clumped up, and I just don't want that to happen. So either side discharge so that it spreads out everything evenly as far as clippings go, or bagging on the first couple times here will be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna set this to two inches. It really only the way to do that on a mower like this it doesn't have a two inch setting is to do one setting higher in the back at 2.25 and this set at 1.75 kind of bridge the gap in between that's usually how I do it and it works okay that way too but if you wanted to go to just 2.25 right now and try that that's fine too it doesn't really make a huge difference but that's how I do it in terms of 
bridging the gap between those heights if you don't have that on your mower. Been the prince, I've been the pop, been the star. great to have that first mow done. As I said, this yard is still needing to mature quite a bit yet, and that's completely to be expected. It shouldn't be completely full and looking perfect here right away. It needs some time to mature, to thicken up, and to get that root system underneath it. So this is looking great though for how far along it is right now, so I'm pretty impressed with that, and I'm pretty pleased with it so far. There's a couple other things to touch on yet in terms of questions that I've had. So now that you're into your first mow, when should you adjust your watering? You remember that when you're watering seed lightly and more frequently, that that's just to keep it from drying out. Once this this is germinated, you can start to adjust your watering schedule. You don't have to be watering so much all the time, but start to move to longer watering periods and less often. So for me, I just had some rain over the weekend and just mowing now, I can still tell that this ground is very wet. doesn't need much water at this point. So again, keep track of your rainfall, keep track of just actually walking out on the yard now that you're able to do that and you're able to mow and see what it's looking like and kind of judge from there. You don't need to overthink the watering part too much, but do now begin to realize that you are past that stage of germination. You're mowing so you can start to adjust your watering back to more of like a normal lawn would be where it needs water less often and more amounts. So that's something to keep track of. I know I've had a lot of questions about that, but don't overthink it too much. Just make some judgments there. Walk out on the yard and see how it's going. Then whenever it starts to need some water, give it a good shot of water here. Let it sit and dry out a little bit more in between and keep up with your mowing as well. So that's a key part here is that you don't also want the yard to be so wet that you can't keep up with your mowing. So letting the yard dry out in between is totally fine. You're past the germination stage. I think the last piece of the puzzle here that I've been getting a lot of questions about has been when to fertilize your yard after this or when should you do another round of fertilizer let's say you put on some starter here at the beginning about three to four weeks time and once I start consistently mowing is when I might give it one more shot of another fertilizer so sometimes I use starter again or sometimes I go to just a regular sort of balanced fertilizer that doesn't matter too much but obviously if you have a soil test done then you know what your lawn needs and go ahead and provide those nutrients at that time also it would be totally fine at this point to do what's called spoon feeding which is giving the lawn lighter amounts of fertilizer but more often. You could go with a light dose here of something quick release like a urea or ammonium sulfate or something like I've been using like a 101010 from the store that has urea in it so it's going to release quickly into the yard. It's not going to be sitting there and waiting to break down so something like that is totally fine as well in low amounts. So you're not giving it such a surge amount of growth that you can't keep up with. Lower amounts like a quarter pound of nitrogen onto the ground more often will help you keep up with your mowing and not give you any out of control growth. So that's something you can focus on. I know it's getting later into the season here, so it depends on where you live too, as to how long you can continue to fertilize. Once the grass is really slowing down, once it's really stopped growing here as you get into the colder season, then you don't need to keep fertilizing at that point. But you've got probably a few weeks here yet that if you wanna give it some fertilizer and keep up with that mowing really consistently, I think you can get some good results here before the winter time. So it's always great to get out there after that first mow of your renovation, after you've gone to all of this hard work, you finally see it kind of coming to life here. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.